Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I'm just saying good evening. Um, I guess I'm speaking to several people from all around the world. So wherever you are, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, I trust you. You're having a great time and um, I trust your weekend is also coming great. So um, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes. Um, thank you all for joining this special Q&A session on personal finance. Um, I believe that uh, a lot of you have received loads of questions, um, loads and loads of questions. And I believe some of you are also connected on this live would be having questions as well. So um, I'm going to be addressing some of these questions. Um, that's the purpose of this um, live today. I'm going to be addressing some of these questions um, related to your personal finance, as well as I'll be um, looking at um, several other topics um, that would be of great benefit um, to you. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so um i just give it a couple of minutes and um would um we'll get cracking um if you do have questions that you would like to ask me uh, you could use the comment section um and uh, as i go through the questions that i've received so far um i'll also be picking some questions from the comment section and I would also respond to those questions accordingly as well. So um, like I said, the purpose of this uh, live session today is actually to answer your questions um, that are related to personal finance. And it's important to to address these questions because I've, I've been receiving um, so many uh, questions from people with respect to several subjects um, cutting across the the area of personal finance, you know, and uh, I saw the need to to respond to these questions because um, not all of them I could actually respond directly to because of, you know, um, schedule, my time schedule. But however, I thought to bring this session uh, so that I can, um, you know, uh, respond to to some of the questions and I believe those who also will be seeing this um, this life later would also be able to benefit from um, some of these questions that people had asked so like I said if you have any question you want to ask you can drop it on the comment section and um, I would be I'll be responding to these um, to these uh, questions as I see them. So I'll just be picking a few ones that I received um, in the last three months. Um, there have been quite a number of them, but uh, I'll just be picking a few. Like We just have limited time, so I'll just take um, some of the ones that I feel are very important for, for, for us to, to know. And it's it's important that when it comes to personal finance, people have to be very intentional, you know, because you know one of the the challenges that um, people face today is the, is always the challenge of you know having to deal with their finances. How do they manage finance? And money management and financial management is something that um, many people uh, are not so um, familiar with, and it's important to before you even start talking about any area that has to cut across your personal finance, you have to first of all understand what the concept of personal finance is, you know, and as well as understanding, you know, the importance of financial literacy, because uh, financial literacy is something that um, we keep talking about in the financial environment because um, it's one thing to say, uh, I want to be, um, you know, free financially, I want to have financial freedom. But it's another thing to say, okay, how do you acquire financial freedom? It's true financial literacy. You know, you have to be able to acquire the right knowledge, you know, that will help you, you know, make certain important 
um, and also smart financial decisions for yourself or maybe for your business and so on and so forth. So um, it's really important to understand first what personal finance is and what financial literacy is. You know, these are this forms the basics of, you know, um, your financial journey, you know, in terms of uh, where you want to go financially, what you want to achieve financially and uh, some of the things that you would want to do financially. So it's um, it's important to always pay attention to to this. So having said that, I'm just going to be picking some of the few questions um, that I have received. I've received so far. Just be put up. I'm just going to put them up shortly. Okay, so um, like I said, I received quite a number of them, but I'm just going to be picking uh, some of them um, randomly just to, to take the ones that are very, very important for people to know, you know. So, um, this, um, the first question here I want to address is someone had asked me, said, uh, how does having a family change my financial planning? You know, how does having a family change my fin financial planning? Now, when it comes to um, financial planning and um, the area of family, it's very important for for individuals to pay attention to, you know, certain areas. You know, when you are having a family, there are certain things that you need to ask yourself. You know, many most times people, and that's one of the struggles most family, you know, uh, have in our current dispensation. If you look at the rate of issues in homes or rate of divorce that we find in in families today one of the major causes of such kind of thing is as a result of finance you know because yeah there are other aspects but finance actually plays a very um important role when it comes to the area of your family now um i i could remember vividly someone had a challenge at some point and the person was talking to me and um, it was more of the person actually had, um, was expecting a baby. So it's a family that was expecting a baby. But as a result of one or two challenges, um, they couldn't afford to, to pay for, for, the, for the bills, right? For the, because the, the lady was on, a, the wife was on a, a sort of emergency situation. And um, it was more of the, the 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 husband didn't have the sufficient funds to deal with the with the bills, and um, that was a major challenge for them because at that point they were trying to see how they could be able to clear the funds for the bills after the lady had given birth. Now my point was, first and foremost, obviously you knew you were going to have a child, right? And there should have been a plan in place, you know, to ensure that you having this child, there has to be the funds set aside to be able to manage any um, unforeseen expense or any emergency that comes across, you know. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because, you know, when it comes to finance, when it comes to money and family, it's always important to be intentional about, you know, your uh financial expense when it comes to the family you know for example if you are you are someone that you know that um okay there are certain things some certain things you want to achieve when you get married now is the time to start planning those things 
not when you are actually in the in the in the marriage that's when you start thinking about how am i going to use the funds how am i going to get the funds from here to do this or to do that you know it's something that you have to be intentional about from the very beginning you know when you are talking about you know having kids having kids in the home it's a it's it's a step is is more of more or less a transitional step you know first of all you are having you are, you are married to someone and then now you are bringing a child to the picture so there's a financial capacity for just you and your your spouse and also when you now bring the child into the picture there's also a financial capacity for that so when you when you are looking at things like this you have to have a financial plan you know ahead of time before you even think about bringing the child into the picture and this is one of the mistakes most people make you know they don't have those those uh, structures in place they don't have they are not actually making the right financial plans for themselves and then when the child comes in to the picture it becomes a struggle because most of them are unable to you know cater for the welfare of that child so it's important to have a financial plan you know that is one of the non-negotiables when it comes to personal finance financial planning is something that you shouldn't be negotiating with because it gives you a sense of direction you know it gives you a sense of structure you know because it's important to have structure when it comes to your finances because if you don't have structure it's just like you you monies will keep coming here and you don't even know where the money is going you know and when it comes to structure there are several tools there are several um uh criterias that you need to follow when it comes to financial planning you have to think about it from the area of budgeting you know you have to think about it from the area of um you know getting to um have a source of emergency fund you have to think about it from a source of savings you know it's important these are these things that i'm mentioning are some of the core importance of personal finance because if you want to be if you want to be someone that will actually have to be financially free you want to operate from a place of financial freedom these are some of the things that you shouldn't be joking with you know as a result of the basics so um in summary what i what i what i want to say with respect to money and finances and i mean finances and as it pertains to family it's always important for you to ensure that um you have a plan ahead of time don't wait until there is a crisis or there's a situation on ground that will require you to start you know pushing yourself to borrow money from here to there you know this is something that most people do they don't have the funds and then what happens is they are pushed or they are forced to end up borrowing monies that they shouldn't be borrowing you know but when you have a plan ahead of time you know it gives you a sense of you know focus and direction in terms of how you are going to deal with things that has to do with maybe having kids or dealing with um your family now i always uh, uh, recommend for families for couples if you are someone that is married you have to have at least two to three accounts right you know it's not supposed to be just one account that you guys are using for all the incomes and the expense no there should be a, a, a separate account for um that is funded for all the um you know both the fixed and variable expenses of the home there has to be a separate account for that and then you have to have your own personal account your spouse can have that the man and the woman can have their own separate account but there has to be a separate account that actually um could help you differentiate your you know fixed and variable expense from your normal your um normal um other financial activities that you you engage in so for example if you are someone that wants to also have you know a savings account you can have a separate savings account you can have an account for emergency funds you no know? so emergency emergency funds are funds that you need in case of any sort of emergency but the most important thing is you need to also have a specific account that can deal with all the related expenses whether you are talking about your fixed expense like your your rent or your you know things that are more fixed you know expenses that are more fixed or if you are talking about your variable expense you know like you like you when you go out to to do your grocery shopping and other things you know it's important to have an account 
that actually deals with situations like this. And you know, one of the things that also cause challenges with family is, you know, when one, one person is any more than the other person, it's always important that when you are dealing with things like this, you have to first of all understand the both of you are one, right? So you are not, it's, it's not about uh, who is any more and who is any less, you know, because that in a way causes a sort of distortion financially when, when both parties start talking about okay, how much is the man earning or how much is the woman earning? You know, this is something that is very, very tricky because you have to understand that someone might be earning this much and the other person might be earning this less, but you don't expect them to con contribute. If you're having an agreement of, okay, we are contributing from our income 20% each to, um, to the expense account, it might be a challenge because if this person is earning, for example, $50,000 and the other person is earning $120,000. You don't expect the one that is any $120,000 to be contributing also 50% uh, of the of that $120,000 and the one any $50,000 will also be contributing 50% of that $50,000 to the expense account. You, you could see that there is a variation and it's not balanced, you know. So when it comes to things like this, it's always important, like I said, uh, every family is different. The dynamics is different, you know, like um, when it comes to the area of finances, it's kind of different for everybody, but it's important for you to, you know, do what works best for you when it comes to, you know, planning your finances and trying as much as possible to ensure that you are doing the things that you should be doing in your finances. So when it comes to finance and family, it's very important to pay attention to this, to this item, you know, don't uh, look at it from a place of, Oh, I will do it. I will just be doing things as they come. No, you have to have a clear structure on how you can deal with this. I believe this question was. Um, I hope it was it was clear and beneficial to everyone. Like I said, thanks everyone that uh, for joining. If you have any question, because I'm taking some questions uh, that I've received in the last couple of months, in the last three months or so. Um, so, but if you have any questions that you want to ask me. You can just drop it on the comment section and i'll try as much as possible to to respond to them so um going forward i'll take another question that i received also there are quite a lot of them I'm just trying to look for the ones that um, would be beneficial for everyone because some of them are quite personal. Okay, so I will take this one. It says, um, what other ways, what are the ways um, by which I can be able to create other multiple streams of income? Now, um, when it comes to multiple streams of income, it's very, very important for, I, I believe I'm, I'm speaking to several people from different parts of the world. Um, however, it's... Um, it's important that when it comes to a, now in our dispensation of personal finance, people who actually get themselves involved uh, in um, maybe a sort of nine to five, or you are someone that is um, a business owner or you're an entrepreneur, you know, most times the monies that come from these activities are just coming from one source, right? You know, and we are now in a, in a dispensation where things are evolving a lot and um, you having just one stream of income, um, it's not going to suffice or give you um, the financial freedom that you require. Remember, the goal is financial freedom. Nobody wants to be, you know, doing the, the rat race of, you know, robbing pizza to people. No, you want to be someone that 
you know when you think about doing something you know that the monies are coming from different places and you know what to do you know with respect to that you don't want to be able to you don't want to be someone that will struggle to uh, to get things done financially you want you want to you want to get to that level where um when you want to achieve something you just don't even think about it too much you know where the money is coming from and you know what you are going to do you know uh and um when you are thinking in that perspective first of all it has to do with your understanding of you know the concept of you know personal finance as it relates to having specific streams of income now when you have such kind of mindset what you want to do is you won't be you won't want to settle for um uh, you won't want to settle for just um your maybe your salary or your what you your profit you get from your from your business rather you want to think about what are the other ways that i could actually um multiply my money or create other avenues to get other multiple income streams and this is something that um is important now when it comes to multiple income streams there are several there's a difference between creating multiple in income streams and there's also what we call the side hustle so there's a side hustle and then we have uh, passive income so passive income is more of a kind of income you get without really having to make any effort you know you don't make so much effort into the passive income so passive income can be something that has to do with for example rental income you know when someone purchases a a property for example you know that this is your property right and you might necessarily just be the owner of the place you give it to maybe a property manager to manage and then you get rental income from the property that's passive income because you can be doing other things and you are you are also a landlord or a property owner and you'll be getting rental income on that property right that's more like passive income when you invest in something that has to do with maybe you're investing in stocks or you're investing in shares for example when you get capital appreciation on those stocks or shares that's more like a passive income because you are just putting your money into something that will generate you you know uh returns at the end of the day so you don't have to really put in so much effort into that whereas when it comes to you know side hustle side hustle is something that you have to put a, a little bit of effort in like someone might be doing a nine to five for example and then maybe at the weekends the person can have a situation where uh he or she will need to do some extra job somewhere just to to get some money from from that to be able to support what they already have so in that case we are not talking about side hustling so it's different from passive income now when it comes to creating multiple streams of income it's a combination of both right you can combine the both together so now uh, let's take for example um before now i i i, I saw the need to because i i am someone that also does a nine to five right but at the same time i saw the need to 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 diversify my options you know to look for the opportunities that are out there to be able to um to you know create other streams of income for myself now there are several opportunities that are there like when it comes to area of creating streams of income um we have um creating digital products right last week we i had i had a session with uh, with a, with someone that was very experienced with digital products someone that um, had a broad knowledge of how you could create um, multiple streams of income through buying and selling digital products now when it comes to digital product there are several uh, opportunities out there there's there's affiliate marketing for example these things I, of course you cannot say they, they are going to grab you uh, funds immediately but however you learning this thing gives you a platform to actually create other streams of income you can build products online you know like they are they are they are subject they are they are tools rather they are tools like the 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 canvas they are tools like the uh the, there's this particular tool that we normally use for for designing um specific uh products when it comes to um the area of your if, it's, if you are dealing with the area of um your marketing 
it's important to to pay attention to those tools tools like um i have that tool just a second um there's canvas and also and also outlook now outlook is the outlook the outlook tool is something that you could use for designing specific um ebooks or slides that are very very uh, important for people who actually are into the area of you know presentations people who are also into the area of trying to deal with things that has to do with uh, digital marketing you know this tool is something that could uh, could help you uh, to to get you know um, an opportunity for you to be able to to build yourself in such a way that you are not just depending on what you are just getting from from your from your salary you know um, one other thing is you know train as much as possible to look at you know several areas that you can create content you know if you want to if you, you are someone that is very interested in content creation you know you have to first of all identify your passion what you are passionate about what you love doing you know because this will give you you know a sense of direction as to how you are going to be able to achieve what you want to achieve you know financially you have to be able to identify what 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 drives you as a person if you are someone that loves writing for example that is a form of skill that you have this is something that you can you know look at out there for platforms that encourage writing or platforms that encourage proofreading of of documents you know and then take advantage of those platforms in order for you to be able to you know um build and create that income stream that you are looking for so now when it comes to the area of uh, multiple streams of income there's there are quite a number of things to pay attention to the first thing you have to pay attention to is um what's what's my passion you know in terms of what what am i good at doing because once you identify what you are good at doing you can create value by by uh, by that particular skill you know and once you start selling that particular skill or of course when you start selling that particular skill people see that skill as something that is very important to them and they need it and then that would that way in other words make people want to go all out for you to make sure that they get that skill and you get some sort of reward in, re in return right so it's important to always ensure that when it comes to multiple streams of income there are several things to pay attention to but first and foremost the first step for you is to identify what you are actually good at once you know what you are good at you use that as a springboard you know to um, create avenues you know you have to look at your environment as well if it's an environment you know we are we are in, an, we are in a world where things are evolving really quick so if you are in an environment where you know that ah there's a need you know there's always a need somewhere you know it's one it's more or less um important it's just for you to be able to identify what the need is and be able to take advantage of that need you know to create an avenue you know to solve problems that will actually generate you income you know it's very important to pay attention to that so um when it comes to multiple streams of income there are several things to pay attention to however like i said it just has to be first and foremost identifying what you are passionate about and using that to as a springboard to identify also what the need of that environment is and then try as much as possible to you know solve problems through creating avenues that could give you that possibility you know i just thought to share that uh point with you um okay there's a question here i'm just going to so my question is thank you mr insight for your question so my question is on remote jobs how to prepare for them and sites to apply to okay so um remote working it's it's this is one of the questions i've been getting um quite a number of you know people ask me so um for remote jobs it's a it's it's the concept of remote working is is actually broad and i i believe on this life it might not be easy to be 
able to give you the whole picture but um i'll just give you a bit of summary but um if you're interested i'm going to be having a special master class on remote working so that's that's um going to be happening soon i i believe i had dropped a video last week or uh, beginning of this week um on on this um so on that uh, master class is going to be uh, a session where uh, i'll be really doing a deep dive into the the remote working space because the remote working space now is becoming more and more competitive and there's a lot of things happening um when it comes to the area of remote working you know but obviously it's a very it's a it's a direction that most uh, companies are actually heading towards now because since the post uh, the post uh, covid era a lot of companies now are no longer in that era of working only from the office so most companies are either doing the hybrid working policy or they are doing the fully remote policy so now we have different kind of remote working jobs there there are remote working jobs that has to do with you know working fully remote from a particular um, location there are remote working jobs that don't really encourage full remote working but it encourages the hybrid mo uh, hybrid working model so the hybrid working model is a model where um, you have the possibility of working um, maybe twice a week from the from from an office space and then the remaining three times of the week you work from your home so um, that's the hybrid working policy however there's also the fully remote working policy the fully remote working policy is the one that has to do with you know working from uh, a particular remote location fully remote um, at, from your own comfort zone you know without having to be in an office space however when it comes to remote working there are several things that you have to understand you know because like i said it's becoming more and more competitive so uh, like i i mentioned in that video you know at the moment according to the last um uh statement that was released by forbes about 20 percent of the uh people that are actually in need of the job is actually linked to just 17 percent of the available jobs so the the, the the jobs that are available on on the market is actually less than the people that are in search of the job so it means that if you want to get into the remote working space you have to differentiate or distinguish yourself in such a way that you have some certain skill sets that you need in order to land those jobs and like i said remote working jobs are different there are several remote working platforms and when it comes to this area it's not all remote working jobs allow you to work from a particular location there are certain limitations to some certain locations for example if we're talking about if a remote work a fully remote working job in africa we have to also think about what are the setbacks you know because the remote working um um the remote working uh, i would say the remote working style has not been something that has been in in place for a long time so it's still evolving however there are certain setbacks like for example if you're in africa and you have a uh, challenge with working maybe from let's say you are in in lagos or somewhere in in port Harcourt, and you're trying to work from there if you don't have a strong um, internet for example that can be a setback because um nobody no client wants to get his or her report at a certain time frame due to um uh, issues with the internet because there's always an agreement with the client or there's always an sla that is agreed with the client you wouldn't want to be in a place where you are not trying to report to your client and you're telling them that uh, the reason why we couldn't meet up the deadline is as a result of uh, low internet connectivity you know so this is one of the setbacks you might have from working from such location and that's why sometimes it can be quite challenging for uh for most people that are in a particular um, uh, location to get some of these jobs because these jobs are quite specific to certain locations you know so um in as much as there are setbacks there are also possibilities for people to also get to work from um from a particular remote location without having any challenge you know the, the like i said the remote working space is evolving and um, um there are several opportunities but this um this session i'll be having um i'll be giving more details on how you can distinguish yourself 
I'll be sharing with uh, sharing with you some of the um, the important uh, skill sets that are needed for you to be able to distinguish yourself in that in such kind of um, competitive remote working space. You know, because it's very it's, it's getting competitive and competitive and competitive every day, and people always want to get to work uh, remotely from the comfort of their home without having to, you know, find themselves in a in a remote working space so um for those who will be interested in that session you can send me a dm uh, after this live session and um, i'll be giving you more info on how you could get registered for this remote uh for this remote working session uh remote working master class and um yeah we can uh, see from there thank you so much all right is there any quest other question um you want to ask I'll, I'll just pick um one more question from here and um if you have any other question that you want to ask me you can drop it on the session and um i would i'll respond i'll just take one more one more from here Okay, so I'll take this one. Can you give me more details on how I can go about investing? I'm someone that is interested in buying buying shares, but I am not so sure about the Nigerian the Nigerian stock market and I don't know what platform to use when it comes to acquiring some of these shares. Okay, so um, when it comes to the areas of shares, it's it's um, it's important to to look more into why you want to invest or why you want to buy the shares in the first place because that is the first step. You have to first of all identify, okay, why am I investing? What is my what is the purpose of my investment? You know, because so many people they tend to always talk about investment ah, i want to invest i want to invest i want to buy this this is what is trending this is the one that is actually getting more value is crypto is either is cryptocurrency or i'm looking at buying this particular stock in the s&p 500 or i'm looking at look i'm looking at getting um a particular share in the nigerian stock market now in as much as these things are important i keep telling people you 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 cannot invest in what you don't know you know because it's the knowledge that gives you confidence to make the kind of investment you want to make you know so first and foremost the first step to actually thinking about any sort of or any form of investment is first of all um understanding what you are investing in why i'm saying this is because it's very important i can give you an example i had an experience a few years ago where i I was so I just finished my masters. So I, I had some money that I was, you know, as a, a, a young lad that is that just graduated and I saved up some money and wanted to, you know, look for something that he could put the money to to generate returns. Now I was so curious about getting returns that I didn't even think about anything else, you know. So there was this then there was this um this uh, uh this investment company that was into forex trading and this investment company they were more into you know dealing of uh trading forex now what happened there was i did not make my research i did not do my due diligence so i was seeing that they were offering close to i think close to at that point they were offering about 20 percent you know um of return so uh, like that was a 20% of return on a quarterly basis. So I was like, wow, this is, this is just so good to be true. You know, I saw that return and I was like, okay, that turned me, turned my head. And instead of me taking my time to really get to, you know, verify, do my due diligence on that company, I didn't do that. I put in my fund in there. Now what happened? I didn't know that this company was not registered with the, you know, securities, an exchange commission of that country. Now, there was an issue. 
they were not registered with the Security and Exchange Commission of the country. Now, when the Security and Exchange Commission of the country came for them, where is your license to do the trading that you are trading? They didn't have the license. So that was the first problem. So that matter was a big issue. They had to take the matter to court. And what happened over the case, the court had to tell them to acquire the license. Now, they didn't have the funds to do that because it required a huge amount of money to be able to get you know, such license. What happened? They had to start taking the money from the investors, monies from investors, the monies that the investors had put in to start dealing with that issue. So they were able to acquire the license at the end of the day. But now they had an issue. They couldn't be able to pay back the promised returns that they had told most investors. So most investors had their money in there. But the returns now, they were not having a struggle to pay back those returns. That was the first issue. So when that happened, a lot of investors started panicking. And this is a, a perfect example of um, uh, what we call a Ponzi scheme. You know, because when investors start panicking, it's like you are asking me for your money. I'm giving you, I'm, you are giving me the money, I'm taking the money, but I'm using your money to pay another investor. So that's how it works with Ponzi scheme. So instead of them using your money to trade and give and maybe generate profits and pay you back your return, they are using your money to give to another investor. So at the end of the day, what happened was the license, they got it, but now they didn't have the money to pay back investors. What they have to do, they start laying off their staff. All their staffs started leaving one after the other because they didn't even have the money to pay staff. And they, 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 they also had the issue with one of the accounts being frozen, you know, because of the fact that, you know, the license wasn't there. So you see all this whole, whole thing happened in such a way that investors panicked. They started promising that, okay, they are going, going to be paying back investors in tranches, in batches, which didn't happen. You know, so many people lost their money. Their money was frozen in there. They didn't get their money back. And then what happened afterwards? They deactivated all their social media handles and you could not get in contact with them. All the numbers, all the lines that you were able to uh, to get in touch with them, you couldn't. Now, what happened there? I lost my money as a result of that because I couldn't get my money back, obviously, because this same um, this same investment opportunity was recommended by someone, you know? And that's one thing that I keep telling people, don't just invest your money into something because somebody is telling you to do that. Even if I'm telling you to do that, that is my own strategy. My own strategy might not be your own strategy. Everybody's financial capacity and everybody's financial situations are different, you know. So you have to be able to understand that when it comes to investment, you have to first of all understand that you want to know why you want to invest in such kind of instrument. You have to have an understanding. I always tell people before you put your money anywhere, do your due diligence. You know, if you don't want to do your due diligence, then you have to pay a financial advisor to do it for you. You know, because that's that's what it means. Because you don't want to lose your money at the end of the day just because you are you are financially negligent of some certain things and that's why the right financial information is very important you know the right investment decisions that you make has to do with the right financial and you know information that you have you know so when it's when it comes to the area of invest investing first you have to understand that you need to ask yourself the question why am i investing that's the first question and now once you'll be able to identify why you are investing, the next thing you want to ask is, what do I want to invest in? You know, and for how long? What's the purpose of this investment? Because if you are investing in a particular, let's say you are investing in, uh, in a, you are trying to buy shares. What is the purpose of you buying the shares? Are you buying the shares because, because there's the difference between buying to trade and buying to invest. These are two different things. If you are talking about buying to trade, that means you are looking at holding short. And when you are looking at holding short, that means you are actually buying these shares when the share price is less, you know, and then look for, I mean, watch it for a period of time to see um, when the share price appreciates in value. And then that becomes, the difference becomes your capital gain on that share. And then you know that you are selling it off when the price, the share price increases in value. That is when you are dealing with, you know, buying to trade, you know, but when you are buying to invest, you are looking more at the long run. Because most people confuse these two concepts because that is why, you know, people just say, I want to buy share, I want to buy share. But 
you have to ask yourself why what's the purpose of buying the share are you buying it to to you know to trade with the shares or are you buying it to actually invest the shares for the long run because i've seen people who because that would determine actually what kind of shares you go for you know because there are so many shares in the in the nigerian stock market for example that don't give you short-term value they give you long-term value because if you look at it like just not so much like a few months ago I think uh, uh, GTCO was was actually they had um, offered there was an in initial public offering of about I'm not so sure how many how many billion shares that they had they had offered at a certain price it was at uh, in an init uh, initial public offering. Now most people jumped into it because they felt it was a unique opportunity, you know, obviously. But if you were jumping into those such share or acquiring those that share with an intention to get a return in the short run, that might not be the best value for your investment. Why? Because if you look at the numbers in the last, let's say, five years, you could see that even though GTB has been very consistent in, the, in, their, in, their, in their records when it comes to dividend payments on those shares, as well as capital appreciation, you could still see that because of some, some of the economic conditions of the country and because of uh, some market conditions, they were there was always a fluctuation in, in the in the share price you know so the only people that would benefit from such kind of investment are people who actually bought those shares with the intention of keeping it for a long time you know but when you are talking about you know if you are looking at your like like i said it, it all depends on your own investment objectives if you are looking at the short term you know then there are several other um uh, financial instruments that could give you short-term value you know when it comes to investment rather than maybe just acquiring shares like for example we have the um the exchange traded funds the etfs you know we have the 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 stocks that are in the s p 500 for example that is the s p 500 uh um about 500 public listed companies in the us you know so these are stocks like apple like um nvidia you know these are stocks that most people um, always pay attention to because these are uh, some of the high performing stocks you see now when it comes to the nigerian stock market it's important to understand the dynamics within the nigerian stock market you know there is there is there are several um there are several uh criteria when it comes to putting your money or buying some of the shares you know I, it's like i said if it comes to investing in or buying shares it all depends on your own personal um objectives like for me what i see or what works for me might not work for you you know because the way i see the nigerian stock market i see it as someone that if you want to acquire something in the nigerian stock market for example if you want to buy a share there you're actually looking at it for um long-term value so it's not something that you buy today and then you expect that in the next one or two or three months you are getting a significant return on the money no it's something that you acquire and you have to just buy those shares and just leave it there for some time, you know, and watch the market, you know. But there are other alternative investments that you could actually pay attention to, you know. Like, it depends also on the dynamics for the age age bracket, you know. Not everybody, uh, there are some people in a certain age uh, that don't like to go all out to take risk, you know. So it also has to, have to depend on your risk appetite. You know, it's like, what level of risk can you tolerate? You know, are you someone that likes taking risk? Because, of course, if you are taking risk, it means that the higher risk you take, the higher the chances of you having a higher return. So the higher the risk, the higher the return, you know. But most people don't want to go with, you know, acquiring investment or putting their money in something that is very risky, you know. And that's why I always encourage you to, uh, encourage people to always have a diversified portfolio. Don't have, don't put your money or cast your eggs in one basket, you know, because that is where the challenge comes into play. When you start putting all your investments in one particular asset class, and then are expecting that that asset class will generate uh, so much revenue, no, or so much income or return, it's not going to happen like that overnight. Diversification is very important. You know, if you have, for example, a hundred dollars, you can spread that hundred dollars across five different asset classes. You know, you can put that hundred dollars in. You can look for at least five high performing shares or shares that your stocks that you know that has the potential based on 
you know, their track record. You know, you have to do your due diligence by actually identifying those shares, knowing exactly, you know, what, how they've performed in the last three, four years. Look at their historical data. And based on that, you can start making such, you know, you can create your portfolio of, of assets and then invest in those assets. Now, when it comes to buying shares in Nigerian stock market, there are several platforms that I, there's one that I particularly use, I particularly use at the moment. It's called the um, the NGX uh, platform, investment platform. But um, aside the uh, NGX platform, the one I am currently using now is the Afri Investor 2.0. So Afri Investor is is an application that you can just download on your on your on your phone on your smartphone. Either you can download it if you're using iPhone, you can use you can download it via the App Store, the iOS Store, or if you are using an Android phone, you can you can download it via the Google Play Store. You know, you just need to download it. Once you do that, you just have to do set up your account. You put in your for those uh, those those of you that are. Uh, currently in Nigeria, it's very easy to even uh, get verified. You just have to put in your your details. There are some few verification process you have to go through, which is like the you have to, they ask you for your BVN and all that. You know, you just go through those verification process. You link it to your bank account, and then you can fund your wallet. And once you fund your wallet, you are able to you know now purchase. You have access, exclusive access to over two hundred stocks in the Nigerian stock market. You know, so. You can then look at it because it has all the details, the historical data, you know, things that has to do with, you know, um, what kind of um, what kind of um, um, performance this stock has had or this share has had in the last couple of years. Then you can look at those results and then make your decision based on those, you know. And also, the, it also has the, the saving bond platform. Now, that is a different subject entirely because bonds are, it's, it's are less risky than stocks now bonds are like you know they have the government the federal government saving bonds like the bonds are, are like uh, um, situations where the federal government for example they are actually lending you treasury bills of or bonds in order for you to you purchase those those bonds and then they in in return they give you it's at a certain um interest rate and in return you get um some certain return at the end of the contract so it's either a two-year uh, duration or a three-year duration that but if you are going for the two year it has a different rate that rate that comes with it or if you are going for the three years it has a different rates that comes with it so acquiring bonds are less risky than than acquiring stocks because bonds are more of course the returns with bonds are not as high as you get with stocks but uh, they are more safer you know um, than having stocks because stocks are more high they are highly volatile you know, because of the the, the, the the change in price here and there and that are also affected by several market conditions. So um, the area of stocks can be quite uh, volatile when you compare it to the area of bonds. So depending on your risk appetite, depending on what you like doing when it comes to investment, these are some of the things you have to understand. But like I said, when it comes to investment, the first thing you need to do is to identify why you want to invest and then based on that it will, it will become a springboard for you to actually know um, the kind of investment you want to do now if you are looking at if you don't want to look at the nigerian stock market and you are more into you are looking more into the the uh the u.s stock market there are several platforms that you can you can use like for me personally i use eToro eToro is for me very user friendly um but i don't know for it, it, you have to check also because it depends on the regions, you know, some of these brokers platforms, because these are brokers platforms. eToro is like a broker platform. A brokers platform is a platform that allows you trade, buy and, and, and sell stocks, you know. So they are like an intermediary between um, the stock market and yourself. So they, they, they trade, they, they, help, they, they link you up, but they get some commission as a result of that. So um, you having a broker's account, is a is a step for you to be able to you know gain exclusive access to close to close to 500 stocks in the US stock market you know so creating a, a broker's account is not very difficult it's very easy in the space of 15 minutes you already have a, a broker's account set up but you just have to know or identify the broker's account that are uh, allowed in your region 
because not all brokers account can operate in set in several regions some some can be operating in the us and operating in europe but will not be operating in africa some can be in africa but not be operating in europe so you have to be able to identify some of these brokers platforms like i said eToro is one of them um uh, trade 212 is another one that i know of um so eToro trade 212 um binance is one that i know people are always very familiar but i don't i, I think uh for people in nigeria i don't think this is allowed anymore but there are several other brokers platform that you can uh you can take advantage of to um be able to you know to invest your your funds and also look into the market um to get exclusive exclusive access to some of these um assets so that's 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 very important to pay attention to i just thought to share that with you okay i think um that's basically the questions i have to respond to there are quite a number of them but um what i'll be doing is i'll try as much as possible from time to time to be coming on this live to address some of these questions uh, as time may permit and um, um i'll get some some of your questions as well is there any other question you would like to ask me before we, we wrap it up on this session if you have any questions or any comments or any feedbacks i'll gladly gladly appreciate um your feedbacks and your comments um also please do well to follow to follow us on fintax academy on the fintax academy handle it's fintax.academy and also go on the youtube channel i've released a lot of uh, content there with respect to personal finance i believe these materials are very helpful you know i've i've um i've um i had seen that um most of, i've gotten most feedbacks from 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 people with respect to these contents you know on the youtube channel there are quite a lot of contents there that i've i've had talking about several topics from savings to investments to you know to um you know creating multiple streams of income you know um how you could plan your budget you know budgeting is one part that people struggle with because um i know that people want to save people want to do this but you know they don't most times it's, it, they feel it's like a big task for them to be able to to budget you know especially when they feel like the money that they have is not enough to to start thinking about budgeting you know uh, but in the little that you have if you can be very diligent with having a structure for that little then you get more you know because sometimes we spend money on things and we'll be shocked like at the end of the month where did this money go you know as like but you know for example if you are you're in a place where you are always spending money on eating out or you are, you are always spending money on transportation it will be it will amaze you to know that if you have a budget for example and you know how much you are getting and where these monies are going to at the end of the day you can easily it's very easy for you to know where you are spending more money in because there's a budget you know because you cannot just be doing it from just your head like i, I know where the money is going no so sometimes you you might it might surprise you to know that the place you might be thinking the money the more the bulk of the money is going to is not even the place you know there could be other places that you are um not paying attention to that you keep spending the money in that the money is going to that you are not aware of but when you have a budget it's like you have a direction you know you cannot just wake up one morning and say i want to travel before you start traveling you must have a plan right you must think about what flight uh if you are flying or if you are using the road you must think about what how you want to get to the destination that you are going and there's something that will take you to that destination there's a tool that will help you transport you to that destination and that is what it has to do with your own uh, financial literacy you want to you want to be someone if you are someone that wants to be financially free financial freedom if the end goal is financial freedom there are tools that will take you to financial freedom and budgeting is one of those tools because if you don't if you don't pay close attention to things like budgeting things like financial planning things like you know savings you know <laughs> investments all these things are what will get you the kind of you know get you to the destination that you want to go 
and you cannot you cannot ignore one side and take the just take the side that that is more appealing to you you have to ensure that you have the whole picture you know it's very very important you know i just have one question here um it says can you share on sps in the future huh okay uh i believe this is uh sps is is a is a currency for for us in love world that's uh, christ embassy a specific currency that was designed for us in love world now sps is is um is something that uh i've been watching um over over a period of time and it's really interesting because i see that it's pegged to to the dollar to the us dollar so um the value of the sps at this at this stage is actually very very interesting you know because anyone who has who has um acquired the sps is the potential of it's it's more or less i i look at it from a place of of um having it's like you are having a dollar you are having access to the, to dollars because the i think the last time i checked um one one sp one sp when you convert it to the naira because most times when i check it i look at it from the naira to uh, to the dollar exchange you know and i i think the last time was a hundred sps should give you about should give you about seventy five thousand or eighty thousand naira you know so um i think it's being pegged somehow to the to the dollar however um i believe um the the currency is something that is valuable you know is quite valuable because a lot of people are not yet aware of it but i believe um as time may go on it's going to get much more value you know it's just a matter of you know promoting this um creating this awareness i don't know how far and that's why i know that for most of our uh, for those who are actually in the ministry programs um they are very it's encouraged that you cannot use any other currency in the in the campground except the sps because it's something that they are trying to promote to ensure that people um focus on on this because of course you know so many things are happening in our world today when it comes to the financial environment you know and the the importance of really getting to focus more on you know on what works is very very key you know um with the u.s government or the u.s uh economy so many things have been happening and that could also affect the dollar because the dollar is not the strongest currency we'll find you know so but however um like I said, the future of the SPs looks bright, and I believe it's just more of creating more, more awareness for people to, to get to work with this. I don't know how, how aside of ministry, how the awareness has been, has been, you know, when it comes to you know for people to be to get informed about the SPs, but I believe it's something that, um, yeah, it's something that would be great for for everyone to to acquire so those are my thoughts on the sps okay so is there any other question that anyone will want to ask me um like i said just um you can make reference to uh to the youtube um materials and there are several of those materials on on youtube it's just fintax you can go on fintax academy uh, please kindly subscribe you can share with your friends share with everyone that you you know and, and let them come on board because i believe many people require this financial information and you know for them to be uh well equipped you know for them to to be able to be confident to make the right financial decisions you know for themselves which is very very important so yeah so do well to share this video um and also the uh, contents on the youtube channel to your friends and loved ones and like i mentioned earlier i'll be having a special master class for all those who are interested in remote working um on this uh, class i would be sharing more details on how you could actually land that remote working job that dream job of your choice 
you know so um, i'll be talking about how you can tailor your resume and, you know to distinguish yourself from every other person and also how uh, what are the tools what are the skill sets that are required for you to be able to get that remote working job and what kind of remote working platforms because it's not all platforms you can jump on there are so many of them but you just need the ones that are specifically designed to meet your needs you know so on this particular master class i'm going to be giving you some of this uh, information and also doing a deep dive into you know the remote working space so that you become more aware and more confident when it comes to your you know your decisions when you are making or looking for that dream job of your choice so if you're interested in that master class you can send me a dm and um, i'll give you more information on how you could get registered and get ready for that session okay so if there's no more question thank you so much for your time thank you all for for joining this live um for for today um i think that will be it um like i said i'll be coming from time to time to respond to your questions as i might have the opportunity and then um, for all, for all those who are also interested in getting more questions answered you can always drop those questions either on the videos i share on the comment section or you can send a direct message to me with your questions and like i said i'll try as much as possible to to have these lives as frequent as i can to respond to some of these questions uh, as time may permit so thank you so much for for connecting today and um I wish you all a wonderful time for those in different parts of the world, whether you are, you're still in the day or in the evening. I wish you a great day and good evening. And then, um, yeah, I would uh, see you again soon. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Bye.